What's your name, sir? Jeff Dahmer. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing the Jeffrey Dahmer portrayals in movies and TV. All right, get in. My name's Jeffrey. Stephen X. Nice to meet you. <laughs> the pop culture landscape's current obsession with true crime stories may have hit its apex with the 2022 release of the Netflix series Dahmer Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story. But the ripped-from-the-headlines dramatizations of true crime personalities is nothing new. However, has the Jeffrey Dahmer case been covered accurately on the big and small screens over the years? Let's find out. What do you think is the best on-screen portrayal of the Milwaukee monster? Let us know in the comments. Ryan Murphy's biographical drama is yet another example of how the writer, director, and producer has consistently proved to be unafraid of tackling controversial subject matter. Shut up, Denise. We want to do this. Okay, Jeff, thank you. That's enough. However, the Jeffrey Dahmer tale is one that was plucked for exploitation right from the jump. Too Soon didn't seem to exist within the lexicon of filmmakers David R. Bowen and Carl Crew, the latter of whom starred as the serial killer in the 1993 film The Secret Life, Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey? Is that you, Jeffrey? Yeah, you heard that year of release correctly. The Secret Life was released barely a year after Dahmer was sent to prison for his crimes and before the killer was himself killed by a fellow inmate, Christopher Scarver, in 1994. Bowen's film is pure exploitation, but made with serious intent, while Crew's performance is memorable for a number of reasons. There's a charm and magnetism to the actor's portrayal of Dahmer that makes it difficult to look away from the man's gaze. Get used to it after a while. Crew plays up the aggressiveness of Dahmer's crimes, turning in a physical performance that's perhaps the least sympathetic to Dahmer's social, emotional, and personality issues. You're not going anywhere, buddy. There is an attention to the methodology here, a gruesome dedication to showing the nuts and bolts of how Dahmer lured and destroyed his victims. The Secret Life is a bloody mess of a VHS, a film with uneven supporting performances, but with a unique lead as Dahmer. Listen, I'm doing everything I can. All the neighbors are complaining about it. And all I can say is that you better get yourself together before we all chip in and have your place fumigated. Okay, thanks for coming by. If Crew's portrayal of Jeffrey Dahmer was unique, then perhaps it's Jeremy Renner's turn in 2002's Dahmer that's widely considered to be the best. Well, if you want me, it's now or never. Truth be told, the future Hawkeye put in a performance against which others are largely measured, inhabiting the role with a disturbing quietness. The personality of Jeffrey Dahmer is one that's consistently been difficult to adapt in the ways many other serial killers historically have been over the years. This isn't a personification of evil like the Night Stalker, nor a cultural lightning rod like the Manson family or David Berkowitz. Instead, Dahmer's case is often played up for sympathy, sometimes at the expense of the victims and their families. Renner, for better or worse, inhabits the totality of Jeffrey Dahmer as a deeply troubled individual, yet with a certain inexorable sadness surrounding his life and sexuality. At the bottom of the bottom, dance around like a clown to get everyone to like you. But no one really does, do they? Dahmer, the film, thankfully does a great job at achieving balance between the gravity of Dahmer's crimes and the situation surrounding his mental state. The man's early signs of alcoholism are set on display, while Renner makes sure to express to his audience that, although we may feel empathy for this man, we surely must not forget the fact that he is a killer. That's it, Ed. That's the last straw. I'm not 12 years old anymore, right? And Grandma, I know I get a good deal. This is your house and all, but if I can't get any privacy, this is not worth it to me at all. 2017's My Friend Dahmer doesn't even bother to focus upon the crimes the killer would eventually commit, but rather adapts the 2012 graphic novel of the same name into a historical coming-of-age story. That novel's author, John Backdurf, was actually a high school friend of Dahmer back in the 70s, and the film attempts to bring a period accuracy and realness that can only come from first-hand experience. Hey, Jeff. Want to save the day, Dahmer? 
Uh, no. Ross Lynch leaves the world of Disney Channel programming for a portrayal of Dahmer that's perhaps the most sympathetic of all. Perhaps too much so by today's standards. I think we should form a Dahmer fan club. What? Yeah, like, I mean, there's just, there's only so much time left. Some family members of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims reported being, quote, re-traumatized after viewing the 2022 Netflix series, a show that also received backlash after the streaming service initially labeled it with an LGBTQ content tag. My friend Dahmer feels even more removed from the reality of the killer's crimes, with the young man's high school life at times playing out almost parallel to the debut of Stranger Things only a year prior. I have to pee. Okay. The intentions may be to play up Dahmer's early life as a social outcast, but one wonders how the aforementioned family members might react to my friend Dahmer were it released today. This isn't to say that signs of Dahmer's troubling behavior as a child are not explored within the movie, however, because Ross Lynch definitely brings that energy to the role. That's enough, Jeff. Hey, Dad! No, you are spending too much time in here. My friend Dahmer does feel a bit unfinished, stopping short of showcasing how beyond the pale Dahmer's life went after high school. However, the moments of menace that do appear within the film feel very real and are executed well. Lynch's performance is solid and reaches into some dark places, capturing a dichotomy as the mind of a murderer emerges from the dark recesses of a childhood mind. My mom will just kill me if I don't get home for dinner on time, so... I just... Yeah, I'll see you on the flip side, Dahmer. The decision of 2006's raising Jeffrey Dahmer to explore the relationship between Dahmer and his father, Lionel, is an interesting one. Hi, Dad. Grandma okay? Yes. Of course she's a little upset. Some of the flashbacks to Dahmer's childhood are handled well by director Rich Ambler, while Rusty Sneary portrays the serial killer with a low, awkward energy. Okay. Okay, Dad, you're right. This is a performance that feels uncomfortable in its own skin, and raising Jeffrey Dahmer is all the better for that idea. However, the film barely allows Sneary to do much with his performance on screen, since the script focuses too much on Lionel and not enough on Jeffrey's crimes. I know. Oh, God. There is a good movie in here, but raising Jeffrey Dahmer doesn't feel focused enough to make good on its premise. I don't like it. This isn't right, Lionel. Something about this whole thing isn't right. Did raising Jeffrey Dahmer walk with exploring that father-son relationship so Dahmer Monster could run in 2022 with social commentary? This might be giving the former film too much credit, but Ryan Murphy's Netflix series is one that ventures beyond methodology and exploitation to examine the cultural and sociological sentiments of the day. I wasn't a good father. I wasn't because I wasn't a good husband. And you didn't feel safe. Additionally, the show works in procedural elements, specifically the failure and prejudices of police at that time, in order to tell a wider story. As a result, Dahmer Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, is one that feels like it's casting the widest net. Thanks, officers. Sorry again. Yeah, now me and him, we gotta go take a shower. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Sorry about that. You guys have a good night. This is also because Murphy's show galvanized outrage over how many lives could have been saved were it not for some of these aforementioned failures. What's more, Dahmer Monster features X-Men actor Evan Peters following in the footsteps of other actors who broke casting molds with Netflix true crime dramas. Told you, we're gonna hang out and watch a movie. Zac Efron in 2019's Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile comes to mind, although Peter's performance is less reliant on charm as it is a quiet and disturbing emptiness. Evan Peters may only be a part of the show's M.O., but the visual arrest of his performance is perhaps the best since Jeremy Renner in O2. I don't like that, son. My fans do. 
before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. If the controversy of Dahmer Monster has taught us anything, however, it's that today's media consumption is much more mindful than in years prior. We may consume more media than ever, but we also mull it over, discuss it on social media, and point out flaws or things that could have been done in a better way. Evan Peters probably won't be the last actor to portray Jeffrey Dahmer, nor will Jeffrey Dahmer be the last serial killer adapted to the screen. What I did, I should be dead. However, the controversy behind Murphy's show may impact how these killers, their stories, and perhaps more importantly, the stories of their victims are presented to an audience. That's about it. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.